guitar here it is it's a sg custom which i got as a husk now i'm not going to do a full review on this guitar in this video but i'm using this guitar as kind of a prop to tell you about my experiences with getting a husk or a guitar with nothing on it no pickups no electronics not even these strap pegs knobs nothing tuners nothing the only thing that was on it was the nut, thank goodness. But even the anchors to put the bridge on were not there. So I had to supply all that stuff. So buying these husks, it's uh, a matter of opinion whether it's worth your money to get something like this with nothing on it and then spend all the time and money to put it together. For me, it was worth it because this was a really, really good deal. It was a SG Custom, I'm not sure whether it's 2019 or 2009. Serial numbers are kind of confusing because they're pretty much identical between the two years. So I'm going to just guess that it's a 2009 just because it's kind of dinged up a little bit. Um, but um, I bought this from eBay, um, which is a good place to get them because they show up there. And the other thing is you have some sort of buyer protection on eBay and you have information about the seller. This particular video is about Craigslist and the pitfalls of Craigslist. It's great if it's local Craigslist and you can go check something out and then you can meet the person and you can see the guitar and you can try it before you buy it. Well, uh, some of us have made the mistake of buying it before trying it. You can do that on eBay because you can return it in most cases. It'll say whether it's, you know, refunds are accepted or whatever. Returns are accepted. Um, and in the case of this, um, this seller had a 100% rating. So I thought, oh, it's worth a try. I'm really gonna get an SG Custom that cheap, you know, even though there's nothing on it. And sure enough, it showed up and it was well packed and it came with a gig bag and wow, I was super happy. So I put it all together. And now I have a guitar that I really don't think I would have been able to afford otherwise. But that's an unusual situation. Usually you buy a Husk you buy the pickups, you have somebody put it together and you wind up spending just as much as if you went to a guitar store and bought a new guitar or a good used guitar. In this case, this is one of the very first times it's ever happened where it was worth my while financially. Um, I saved a lot of money. I probably saved about $2,000 on this because I got it raw and then put it together. That's including the money I spent on the pickups and all the other parts because all that stuff's usually pretty cheap. Uh, even if you get good boutique pickups, you can get them, you know, people, gear hounds, they're changing equipment all the time. They'll buy a set of Seymour Duncan anti antiquities or something like that and go, oh, I've always wanted these things. And they put it in their guitar and then they don't like them and then they sell them and then somebody like me who does like them can pick them up. So there are de deals out there. Okay, now I want to get to C Craigslist and what happened to me and what I've learned from it. Some of you people probably already learned this and know it well. I was just stupid enough to be a victim of somebody um, who's a Craigslist thief, so to speak. Um, there was a 1969, supposedly, SG Special Husk. You know, hadn't been repaired, but it was you know pretty beat up and had nothing on it, no pickups or anything like that. And it was supposedly up in San Francisco, uh, which is not far from me. It's an hour and a half drive. So um, I got in touch with a person on San Francisco Craigslist and said, I'm interested in it. And I got a message back with a bunch of details about the instrument or whatever. And he said that he was traveling on business. Would it be okay to ship it? Red flag number one, it's Craigslist. You don't know this guy. There's no you know, returns accepted or anything. It's Craigslist. 
this person could be in Zimbabwe or Canada or who knows, you know, anywhere in the world pulling a scam on people in this area. So um, I PayPal'd whatever, $340 or whatever the guy wanted for it. And of course it never came because that guy never had that guitar. He just pulled the photos off the internet to get somebody stupid like me um, to uh, PayPal the money. Well, luckily it was only 300 and some odd dollars, which to me is, you know, that's something that's significant. I regret it, but it's not like $3,000 or something like that. And there's people looking to steal $3,000 from you on Craigslist. Okay, certainly not everybody, but um, I don't know whether it's the same guy, but um, I saw a gold top that was $950. So I went, wow, that's a nice looking gold top. It looks like it's got binding. Oh, it's not a studio, it's $950. What's wrong with it? And so I got in touch with the guy and of course it waited about a day to get back to me and said, oh yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know, such and such a guitar. Well, it wasn't such and such a guitar. He listed it as a classic Les Paul Signature T. Well, there's a Les Paul Classic and there's a Les Paul Signature T. They're two different things. And so I, had, I asked the guy to clarify what it was. He said it was a 2017. Les Paul Signature T was only made in 2013. And so I thought there was something up with this guy. Um, if he doesn't know what he has, well, maybe he doesn't have it or maybe it's stolen or whatever. Um, so I got a little suspicious and he said, oh no, actually it's a 1957 Les Paul standard reissue, $950. I don't think so. Bottom dollar on one of those things is about 3000. So I knew this guy was probably scamming. So I said, oh yeah, I'm interested in it. I want to check it out. And it was listed in my town, in my city right here. And the guy on Craigslist got back to me and said, well, actually I'm down in Greenfield. Could I ship it to you? That, that, that thing again, of course. Um, I said, no, I actually have to see it in person. And I can't get down there until this weekend. And he went, okay, well then, the listing disappeared. So, um, but another listing came up. It was $1,400. It was a beautiful looking guitar. It said, Wildwood Les Paul Standard Wildwood Spec Edition. I went, that guitar I think is close to $4,000 new. And he wants $1,400. It had a beautiful flame maple top on it. It was a stunning looking guitar. And so I got in touch with him and uh, I said, uh, how much does it weigh? And he said 4.17 kilos or whatever. I went, this guy's probably not even in the United States, okay? Said for sale in my town, you know? So then um, I said, I would like to check it out. He said, okay, well, I'm down in Morro Bay, which is a good three and a half hours away from me. Can you come down here? And he's banking on, no, I don't want to drive down to Morro Bay, which is probably true. But if it was real, if the guitar was real, I would drive down to Morro Bay and I would probably buy it $1,400 because I mean, that's like one third of what it's supposed to cost. Um, but I knew that it had to be a scam because of the whole line of like, oh, can you drive down here? Oh, I can ship it. Like, so yeah, I PayPal money to somebody, number one, I've never met. Number two, doesn't seem to have any idea what the heck they're selling. Otherwise they wouldn't price it so ridiculously low. And, um, or to lure people in you know, they way underprice it. So um, this seems to be a scam on Craigslist. Uh, I don't think you can get away with it on Reverb or eBay because there's too many protections, but Craigslist is, it's the wild, wild west. Anything goes. Okay, so um, if you go on Craigslist and you see a guitar that looks like a really good deal, like maybe too good, but still, you're interested, like I would be, anybody. It's like, oh my gosh, a gold top. Like it looks like a Les Paul standard for under a thousand dollars. It can't be right. So you want to get in touch. But if they mention anything about shipping it, um, just
go no further. Send the FBI, flag the poster. They are scamming you. They want to rip you off. Okay. And uh, later on, I'll tell you all about this thing. And it's worth talking about because it really, it's, I think it's my new favorite guitar. And that's saying something because I got other guitars that are pretty damn good. But this is like, these are, they're, they're, they're unusual. I mean, a two pickup less, or a SG Les Paul custom two pickup, not a three pickup, in black, not in white, and with no vibrato. People are really crazy about the vibrato. Oh, don't you want the Maestro vibrato? Don't you want a Bigsby or something? No, I don't. I want my guitar to stay in tune. You know, those things just make it almost impossible for your guitar to stay in tune unless you have it super dialed. And me, I don't know the first thing about dialing one of those things in. So there you go. Okay, well, I've, I've said too much. Thank you for watching.